My name is Heather Lima. I work for ASUG, and I'm here today to help make sure that this session runs as smooth as possible. But before we begin, I want to share some housekeeping notes. If you have any questions for the speakers throughout the session, please enter them into the Q&A chat. We will be moderating this feed, and we'll try to get as many as possible. We also welcome and encourage you and your fellow attendees via the room chat feature as well. Note that today's session is being recorded and will be available for you to view on demand later today. But if you have any questions for our speakers, their contact info will be displayed at the end of the session. And with that, I'm pleased to introduce Bob Sockless. The room is yours. Thanks, Heather. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, today, we're going to talk a little bit about simplifying the complexity with BTP. But I think a question you guys might ask is, why were, why did we start with data? Joffe just presented a great session on, on starting with data. And, and I think it's really important that we realize where data is in the middle of us trying to become an intelligent enterprise. So, Heather, before you uh, mute up, don't mute up. I saw you mute up over there. Um, yeah. I want you to take a guess at this. So, Harvard Business Review did a survey and asked C-level executives, is your company data-driven today? What do you think the answer was for the majority of the people that responded? I'm going to guess B. B is not a bad guess, but the truth is, no, it's not quite that high. The, the truth is we've all heard this, right? I mean, the economist had the world's most valuable resource on their cover way back in 2017. And there's been numerous articles, but the truth is this survey, which now has been running almost 12 years, you know, and even though 62% of companies are investing at a rate greater than $50 million a year, that's in the Fortune 500, the answer is only 24% of C-level executives believe that their companies are data-driven. And a, an additional question in this survey that's kind of interesting as well is, do you manage your data as an asset? And only 39% of companies do. So, you know, it seems like we're still a pretty long way away from becoming a data-driven enterprise at the average company. What's really interesting is how much money people are spending, right? 65% have hired a CDO. 78% have some AI in production, and most of that is being spent on offensive goals. In other words, trying to produce more revenue. The two things that come up as the most positive disruptors in technology are AI and ML, and then the migration to the cloud. And if you look at my chart right here, Lou, when you look at AI, the truth is even though it's, it's in use, most of it's not in wide use. So if you want to take a look at this entire report, it's really interesting. Just go to sapbtp.com slash links. So when we talk about data, you know, what are the keys to becoming a sustainable, intelligent enterprise? And believe me, my presentation is going to be kind of a big picture view of the world. Right? It's going to be what, what are we all focused on today? And I travel the country a lot, and I can tell you that four things come up often. To become a data-driven enterprise, all decisions must be supported and enhanced by timely data, getting the right data to the right place at the right time. But there's more. you got to integrate all your different applications together so you, ma you can maximize all those investments that you've made. Systems also have to uh, leverage ML and AI if you want to drive scale and efficiency. You know, how do you do twice as much revenue with the same number of people? And lastly, all of us are under pressure to innovate more quickly but you still want to securely connect to all your other systems. So a statement that has really stood the test of time, originally coined by, by Charles Darwin, I, I, okay, I changed it a little bit, but it's not the oldest, most established companies that survive and thrive. It's the ones that are most adaptable to change. And this is truly a spoiler alert for BTP because BTP was created to help SAP customers become nimble, adapt quickly, and embrace change. The truth is there's increasing pressure. The check engine lights are really on, and I don't know about you guys, but I freak out when just one check engine light's on, and in, in, in truth, three different ones are blazing right now. There's a lot of pressure on the CIO because every department is asking for consumer-grade apps to run on their mobile device and deliver whatever information they, that they need at the exact same right moment. When you look at it, the C-suite doesn't understand why things aren't completely digital near real time and working well together. And it's a long path to get there. And lastly, the business itself wants to become more data-driven. It wants that data support to make those decisions. Unfortunately, the pandemic has absolutely added fuel to the fire. I mean, all the supply chain problems we've had, all the boats sitting off of California, 
I mean, it's been a disaster, and you would think we would get some relief, but no. Other geopolitical events are happening right now that are putting even more pressure on, and let's face facts, the cost of capital is going up quickly as we battle inflation. You know, Heather, I can't unmute everybody in the room, so I'm going to use you as my, uh, my, the person I talk to, I guess, but you've traveled around, you've seen a lot of customers. Do these three problems really come up to the top of the list when you hear, talk to people about the problems that they're facing today? Oh, absolutely. We hear that all around the country. Yeah, it's, 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 it's everywhere I go, everybody agrees, we have to solve these problems. Well, when you think about competing for the business and earning more business, the truth is harmony matters a lot. How you serve your customer across all your different channels. There's no greater example of this in my mind than what Steve Jobs did with Apple. You can play a song like High Hopes on your Apple Watch. Next thing you know, it shows up on your desktop. It shows up on your iPad. It's an amazingly harmonious kind of world, and I'm very satisfied with all the Apple products that I own. But it's easy to forget that just 20 years ago, there was a titanic battle going on. It was between Apple and Sony for the music business. It's hard to remember, but that is absolutely when the first iPod came out 20 years ago in October. What's really interesting is the CEO of Sony got on our stage at Sapphire. I don't know how many of you guys were actually at the Sapphire, but gave an amazing speech. Howard said, look, we had the best of breed device. We had the channel. We had all the relationships with all the music producers. We had the content. We still lost to a competitor that had none of these. It's hard, to, it's, it's hard to remember, but at that time, Apple was only a $10 billion company, and Sony was four times larger. But if you look at the stock chart since then, you know, amazing results. And by the way, I didn't have my 401k in Apple, or if I did, I might not be here today because I'd be retired, but that's a different issue. But the whole point is that it ab Apple absolutely took off, while Sony, the yellow line across the bottom, just barely trailed the S&P 500. You know, when I look at this, I honestly believe that for decades we've been focused on the wrong problem. We, a problem comes up in our business. Let's say the truckers want a new app. We then create that app in its own little tech stack, and then, or they purchase something, and they throw it over the wall to IT, and they say, hey, guys, can you help make this all work well together? It becomes like whack-a-mole. We're hitting, it, you're hitting these different applications, right, until all of a sudden the average Fortune 500 company is running 484 different apps to run the business. And you would think SaaS may save us, but in truth, no, SaaS is growing like a weed now. The, if you look at this chart, I know it's hard to read, but the whole point is that SaaS, the average company is now running over 100 different SaaS applications, and we're not discontinuing those on-premises apps fast enough to make up for the fact that this is growing too. So when you look at these check engine lights, what's really interesting to me is I look at that and I think, are these the core problem or are they symptoms? And I think they're symptoms of a bigger issue. The bigger issue is complexity. complexity is why we have slow progress and the backlog continues to grow. Complexity is why we continue to build silos and departments, and it's really hard to serve our customer in a harmonious way. And complexity is why we're having a hard time getting data to the right place at the right time to help make decisions. I ask this question, and I get a universal answer. Are most vendors trying to help you simplify? And the answer is no. I mean, if you look at a chart of just the companies that are competing for your business, and data and AI, it's mind-boggling, right? And even if I narrow this down to the top 25, it's still an amazing integration effort to try to get this done. What is BTP in a nutshell, and what was it invented for? The truth is, if you've been around for a while, because of this whack-a-mole kind of world, most IT landscapes have become rigid and complex. The good news is SAP can help because we had to overcome this problem ourselves, which led us to create the business technology platform in order to simplify systems so that our customers can maximize the value of their investments, become more resilient, innovate, and adapt to change. The truth is we kind of dug our own hole. We went out and bought a lot of companies, whether we're talking about Success Factors or Ariba or Field Glass or Qualtrics and everybody else. As a result, we had to integrate all those things together. So we worked on our internal technologies to make that happen. And then, I mean, in a brilliant moment, I don't know if Hasso made this decision or someone else, they decided to package up business technology platform, the thing that we use internally, and offer it to our customers for this goal, to simplify systems so you can adapt quickly. The goal, of course, is harmony across departments and the ability to be resilient when you're faced with supply chain challenges. The truth is, it is very difficult to innovate when you're spending 80% of your budget 
just trying to keep the lights on. All of us have a chart that looks something like this. Right? There's lots of data movement. There's lots of incompatibilities. And if you do any mergers, I mean, it's not one plus one, right? It's an exponential problem because even though that new company might also have SAP components, putting those two things together and having it all work well together is very difficult. The good news, SAP's mission has never changed. We've changed technologies, right? We started with mainframes, then we went to client server, then the internet explosion, all these things happened. But we've always believed that the whole must be greater than the sum of the parts. The truth is technology has gotten good enough today the modularity is good enough, and it's going to give us a solution for this problem. This idea of monolithic apps is a thing of the past. The future is highly modular, real-time, and cloud-first. Modularity has got an absolutely crucial role in defeating the complexity. But the truth is, this is our point A. We can't change that. This is where we're coming from. But when I look at that, in my mind's eye, what I see is the insides of a Swiss watch. Inside that watch, all the gears intermesh, all the little levers have to work well together. And that's why we're scared to change anything. When it's all working, it's great. We can report our numbers to Wall Street on, on time. But the new model looks a lot more like this. So, Heather, come off on mute. You're always getting on mute. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever worried if you download a new fitness app to your smartwatch that suddenly core timekeeping or core calendar or core messaging is going to stop working? No, never. Yeah, the reason for that, of course, is that they're secure connectors. They've abstracted the inner workings of that watch from all the apps you might download from wherever in the, wherever in the world the innovation is happening. You're innovating at the edge. This is, in fact, the architecture that we need, this kind of highly modular playbook to make sure that our core systems stay secure while we can innovate at the edge. So this is my highly simplified view of BTP. It's got all these different components in yellow. It's a precision engineer platform to, to do this modular future that helps you optimize your business processes. And an important part of it is that we give you business-ready pre-built content so that you can go quickly. So if you look at, for example, well, let, let, let's say you're doing S4. The whole idea is, you know, the reasons why you would do SaaS in the cloud are pretty straightforward. The devil's in the details. It's less expensive. You can stay on budget. All these things are part of moving to the cloud. Everybody knows that. Right? But if you, if you have S4, it's kind of like Microsoft Word. Nobody uses all the features in Microsoft Word. You use part of them, and that part is the covered scope that you would need when you're running S4. It's the same exact scenario. But there's always going to be some uncovered scope. There's going to be integration to a very unique environment or landscape that you have. You're going to have, probably have differentiating capability where you're fighting your closest competitors. And you know, the truth is, you know, as long as you get a good fit with the covered scope, you'll never write that stuff yourself. I mean, we've got 35,000 people writing our course software, right? But BTP is was designed. It's our solution for that custom fit. It's to make sure that you get a custom fit with any application that you buy from SAP. And what's really cool about this, if you think about it, is that there's lots of future scope that's already in BTP. So let's say you're not ready for chatbots today. BTP already has that functionality in there, so as your needs change, as you decide to implement chatbots, it'll be part of what's already invented within BTP. A lot of you guys might have seen this picture. There's different ways to extend SAP software, the traditional classic extensibility or the side-by-side, -side, but the side-by-side -side has amazing benefits. It gives you this modularity so you can keep your core clean. You can upgrade that more frequently. You can leverage new services. You can innovate more quickly. You can create new business models. There's lots of reasons to try to get it done that way. So full circle, where I started, it's not the oldest, most established companies that survived. It's the ones that are most adaptable. BTP was created for this reason. And keeping your core clean is absolutely crucial if you're going to take advantage of cloud economics. When you do, you're going to find out that, well, SAP for, is building everything new on top of BTP. And if you build everything modular and new on top of BTP as well, you'll be able to stay lockstep with SAP. I like to envision it this way. These are the things that BTP does. Helps you with integration, helps you with extensibility, helps you with automation. In the back end, you've got 500 plus applications running both on premises and on the cloud. But you're trying to present a coherent view to your associates, to your customers. And when you help, when you put BTP in the middle, it helps you get that done. And that's how you get the you know, maximizing your investments. And one plus one plus one equals a lot more than three. So what are the benefits of BTP? It kind of comes down to this. First and foremost, overcome the complexity. you got to get that done or everything else is going to just plague you. 
You got to help make people's lives better with smart automation. That's how you get more done, more efficiently. And you don't have anybody beating their head against their desk because they're doing vendor, you know, invoice scanning. You integrate everything together to get better value for all the things that have been purchased. You want to get more valuable insights. This is the right data to the right person at the right time so you can make the right decisions. And above everything else, every business is kind of the sum of the processes, right? You want to optimize your processes across departmental silos so everything runs great. There's also a bonus. If you do it this way, you'll easily be able to incorporate SAP's advances. Incredibly important point that I think, you know, I came out of data, by the way. I used to be a data guy for many, many years. And data-driven insights, when they're sitting on some desktop on some other server, are not necessarily solving the problem. No one's going to, you know, take the moment, go over here, take a look at this, then try to make their decision. It's got to become part of the process. So if you think about any process that's in your enterprise, so let's say order to cash, a lot of stuff happens between the time somebody makes the purchase, goes to multiple departments, and they, they receive the goods and they hopefully give me a great net promoter score. The truth is, lots of decisions within our company have to happen along the way, whether they're human decisions or automated decisions or more human decisions. And if your data is not talking across those departmental silos, you're not going to get the right data to make the right decision at the right time. You're going to find out that process is all over the place. Data-driven insights have to become part of the process, and no company is in a better position to do that than SAP because we are absolutely running those business processes. We recommend putting BTP on your favorite infrastructure cloud. Why? Because if you do, you get the best of both worlds. We're focused on two different things. SAP is always focused on your business process. How do we make that better? How do we help you make better business decisions? How do you defeat departmental silos so everything works in harmony? And how do you operationalize intelligence and make it part of the process? Yes, the infrastructure players, they're doing incredibly important stuff as well. But it's much more IT focused. How do you optimize compute? How do you scale your storage? How do you add bandwidth? How do you run your DevOps? How do you expand more data centers? So the two together work incredibly well. When I get asked this question, you know, what's the key difference between what we're doing with the business platform and what all these other infrastructure players are doing with their technology platforms, it kind of comes down to this. We're trying to help you make the business, make IT as part of the business, three to five times more productive. The best way I can describe this is through an analogy. So Heather, uh, imagine David had an amazing idea over the weekend, right? He was barbecuing in the backyard. He comes into the office on Monday and says, look, uh, I got this great idea, Heather. We got this incredibly important meeting happening five days from now. I want you to build this incredible Lego city that absolutely covers this entire conference table. And so my question to you is pretty simple. Would you go down to the store, got a deadline of Monday, would you go down to the store and buy Lego city kits that are made to build skyscrapers and firehouses and everything else? Or would you go buy this big bag of Lego blocks? What would you do? <laughs> I would buy the city kits, definitely. Yeah, and this is exactly what we're trying to do at SAP with BTP. We are absolutely selling you, as part of BTP, all the business content that goes with that to make sure that you have something that you're configuring that's already been worked out. And sure, our partners, yeah, I can create any app I want on AWS, no doubt about it. But I'm starting from a lower, uh, you know, I, I don't have a blueprint. I don't have all the things that I need to get that done. And I can engineer it, but it's going to take me more time. So our city kits are, this is my highly simplified view of this. These things in blue are our city kits. We have all the components you need at 80, 85% written for you to get business applications done. This is actually what we're doing to create our new business applications as well. We're using the stuff in yellow to assemble it. It runs on top of your favorite infrastructure. It's got all the connectors you need for integration across all SAP properties, and it's got open connectors. So all the other usual suspects in the enterprise are also accommodated. So let's say you wanted to create a portal. You would start with our portal technologies. You would then connect it to the back office system using all our connectivity stuff. You don't want to be the next colonial pipeline, so you'd include all our security components. You, the, the portal might actually generate work, so therefore you use our workflow components to make sure it connects to other SAP applications, right? It may deliver analytics to the people that are using the portal, and because they come from all over the world, translation is included as well. You would assemble all that with Business Application Studio. That's how you get much more productive. The key word to remember is content. We're shipping content across the board here. Right? It starts with these city kits. I'm sorry, the, all these different services. Right? But there's much more. If you go to api.sap.com, you're going to see over 2,500 
different worked out APIs and connectors and the mappings to make sure all that works. There's, we're releasing intelligent bots every single month to help automate that ERP. Analytics Cloud comes with pre-built dashboards you can start from, so you're not starting from scratch to get that done as well. And right now, everything's got a use case blueprint. So let's say you want to text your customers when their order ships. All that's already been worked out. You don't have to work it out for yourself. That's how you become much more productive. So how does BTP impact the business process? Let me dive into that for just a second a little bit further. You know, if you look at any process, I don't care which one we're talking about, it's got different steps along the way, and these steps may run in different swim lanes. Some of it may run in S4HANA, other applications, there may be manual steps, and of course there may be things that run within BTP. So depending on where they run, this is the process that we're trying to create this harmonious look on. You know, there's, there's always going to be things that make sense to do the traditional way, user exits and baddies. But at, at the end of the day, trying to minimize what you do in that area makes a lot of sense to try to keep that core clean. The, the one, you know, app that people use the most, of course, is integration. And if you think about it, you know, integration is not just between SAP stuff. It's also with things like Salesforce or whatever else. But it's incredibly important. We offer pre-built integration content not only for app to app, but from for business to business, from business business to government, we got all that kind of stuff that's in there. It's an entire hour session by itself. And I know that I think uh, Fabian's talking about integration tomorrow. So definitely catch a session. A great example of this is what Murphy Oil did. Murphy, if you're not familiar with these guys, exploration and production company, they had this operations center where they were basically losing one out of four days or one out of, yeah, one out of four days just trying to track down which system had which task in it. 15 million tasks a year, they're trying to keep production up. And if you're not familiar with oil and gas, there's lots of moving parts. It's an incredibly difficult problem. They integrated 15 different systems, kind of created a NASA mission control, didn't add any people, and it just puts it. 15 to 20% improvement with the exact same work course that they had. A great example of what you can do with SAP integration. Beyond that, you know, there may be a moment here where you get, you get a notification from S4HANA, that requires a manual process, let's say order processing. This is a great opportunity to use, you know, uh, what, we're, what we're now calling SPA, which is process automation. But the idea is that things can be automated. A perfect story of this is what we did at Zulig. If you're not familiar with Zulig, they are a huge uh, uh, distributor of pharmaceutical products, Asian pack, basically, right? 3 350,000 different facilities. And when COVID hit, it was really difficult on them because they had manual order processing. And the order processors were out themselves with COVID. And so they, they absolutely leveraged SAP RPA to get it done where now all of a sudden orders could be processed much more quickly and become part of their entire uh, ecosystem. An amazing side benefit is that they suddenly were able to beat back all their governmental audits because now everything was much more accurate because everything was done the exact same way every single time. It absolutely solved a, a, a problem during the crisis for them. They could continue processing orders and supplying everybody with their pharmaceutical products. So from there, you know, you might realize that there's a lot more things. Like, for example, streams can bring in other notifications where we can do predictive analytics, becomes part of the notification, which can then become part of automation. But sometimes you might want to use ML and AI to figure out what should be manually processed or routed versus what should be automated. So there's lots of opportunities that come with that, and all those things are part of BTP. A very common use case within BTP is to create portals. With those that we usually include some sort of embedded analytics. We're very much API centric when it comes to what we're doing. I mean, we have full boat API management integrated in our integration suite. So, you know, you would build a portal within the business technology platform. And then of course it's a write once run anywhere kind of situation. So it'd run on all kinds of mobile devices. And we've got mobile development kits for iOS and for Android and everything else. There, another great example would be that you could get an event notification that turns in an application that you want to create. Right? And you can use any pro code or low code, no code extension to get that done. An example that brings all this together, I think, is Vestas. If you're not familiar with Vestas, they build more of these windmills than anybody else on earth. They had a problem. Their CEO wasn't happy. Every time he wanted something new for the business, the estimate was a couple of years. It, it wasn't good enough because they were drowning in paper. If the wind blew the door open at the construction trailer, half the stuff could fall on the floor, right? And it's an expensive problem. These cranes are huge. When you move them to the wrong spot, $12,000 mistake. And there are lots of smaller mistakes as well. Services, they had a problem too. 
They're running all these green screen apps on Panasonic Toughbook. And when this guy needed a part, he'd have to jump in his little van, drive all the way back to town to try to order the part, come back out. Kind of like me work, going to Home Depot seven times on the weekend. So the bottom line is they jumped on a plane. They went to Cupertino at the Apple Space Dish. They did design thinking with their field personnel. They went back to Denmark. They used BTP for exactly what it was invented for. Use that pre-built content to go fast. Connect all your SAP and non-SAP data together. Construction was absolutely transformed in just six months. 100% paper to 100% iOS. Services too. They collapsed 50 different legacy apps. They built in KPIs so they don't have to train. They get to see how people use their app the minute they were given their phone. They absolutely love to use it without any training. Then you can take the results of your custom app and, of course, make it part of the SAP process through OData. There's lots of things that we can do with business rules and workflows, which kind of work well together to make sure that the right routing happens. So, for example, you got a capital expenditure request. Does this have to be routed according to what kind of rules? Chatbots are an absolute future where you just ask the system what you, what you need next. And lastly, we have process monitoring. Stefan Ressing is going to talk tomorrow, I think, about what we're doing in with process. But a great session, by the way. Stefan's awesome. But, you know, a great story of this is, for example, what we did at Achea. Achea is a utility provider in the Rome area in Italy. They had a real problem. They had to post police at their customer service counters to prevent violence. Kind of crazy, right? Because it took too long to do everything. 22 days to estimate a job. Eight days to connect service. Everybody was really upset. They took a data-driven approach to see how their processes were running, and the truth is it was incredible results. In just one year, they were able to improve everything by more than 60%. So excellent customer service is absolutely how you stay in business. So that's kind of the big picture of how BTP helps with your business processes and makes them better. If you want to go to a cool link, this one kind of shows you the top 25 use cases for BTP. I've actually got a link that has all these links on there. But ultimately, BTP is the foundation for your intelligent enterprise. And people say, is that marketing or is that something that's incredibly important? I think it's incredibly important. Let me explain why. Christian Klein puts it this way. We've got to break down your silos so that you can serve your customers better. But the problem is that today, the business has a great view of the, of the uh, I mean, the, everybody's got a great view of their business. But unfortunately, it's in the rear view mirror. I know what we did last month or quarter over quarter. But what are we doing right now is the incredibly important part. The technology is fast enough. We can become a real-time business. We can start looking at the front windshield of our car, a much better way to drive your car. And when, once you get here, the next five years is pretty obvious. A lot more automation. Manage the business by exceptions. Unfortunately, most of us are still here. We're trying to sense what's happening. We're gathering data. We're sticking out on S3 or whatever. But when, until we combine that data in near real-time with the transactions that are within SAP, it's hard to understand why things are happening. We have to do this quickly because you have to act in time as part of the process to be able to keep your customers happy. At the same time, executives want to make great future predictions so they know where to spend their capital. This is how you affect positive outcomes. And so ultimately, the system needs to learn. So you get better at this over time. And so, like, for example, if the new challenge today is sustainability, we need to have analytics that work. You know, understand why it's happening. They have to happen quick enough to make accurate future positions so we can make positive outcomes. So it's the same exact cycle. This is how we win customers and stakeholders for life. So why BTP is part of a comprehensive SAP approach? I think there's four main, well, there's really five main reasons. Enable this real-time world, kind of a forward-facing intelligent enterprise. Create this modular model so that way you can overcome complexity. Become more adaptable because the world's not going any slower. The challenges are just everywhere. And, and help, you know, BTP can help you by becoming this, this central nervous system that's focused on the business. Ultimately, it's all about simplifying your overall landscape. That's how you become more nimble, resilient, and adaptable. I love this quote. Far too often, good things get in the way of great things to do. And I think it's incredibly true, right? We all have projects that are on our table today. How do we pick the right one? Well, if you think about the future, if I ask any enterprise architect, where do you think the future is going to be 10 years from now? People tell me this you know, in, in a heartbeat. It's going to be a network of applications. It's going to be a, a data fabric that everything works well together. So knowing where the future is is pretty obvious. Right? A composable network of enterprise applications running across multiple clouds. There's going to be a data fabric, and everything's going to be near real time with enterprise messaging. So we have to make our decisions today to simplify what we have so we can get to this future and not have some other, you know, Band-Aid on top of our complex chart. 
that's all I have. Uh, I, this link right here, sapbtp.com slash links, will give you a, a curated list of links that I've put together. I hope this was helpful. I know it's a little bit different. A lot of the other sessions are going to go deeper on integration. You know, Joffy went deeper on data. Uh, uh, Stefan's going to go deeper on process. But I think you get the big picture here of why we invented BTP and why we think it can help you.